It's so warm in this garage this morning. As you guys know, last year I put new heat in this garage. That one up there. This comfort zone it's called. The thing is nice. It's all digital, has remote control for it, runs off 220, I think 220, um, and it puts out massive heat. The problem is it would stay warm and then down at this end of the garage, it would be pretty cold over here. And then it would heat the garage up to like 80 degrees and then the thing would kick off and it would cool down to like 60 before it kicked on again. There's something wrong with that heater. And the other thing is when it kicks on and off, it bangs really loud. So it became a problem. Um, I'm not the type that only turns the heat on when I'm in here. I turn it on, get everything up to temp and leave it. Once all this steel, concrete and everything gets up to temp, you're better off to just leave it on a lower setting, maintain that temperature. Otherwise, every time you kick it down and then you kick it back up when you wanna be out here working, it takes forever to heat everything back up and you're using twice the amount of electric, gas, whatever your heater is. Uh, it's just like people that turn their heat down in the house during the day when they leave and then turn it back up when they get home. I used to do that all the time. Completely stupid, use far less, um, just leaving it on. But I moved the thermometer over to here and I don't know what's there right now, if you can really see it, it's right about 70 degrees. So I had it over at that end and Ryan wired in a new heater for me yesterday. This thing has maintained a perfect even temperature in here. I, I gotta keep it on low, it gets too hot in here. But it maintains a nice perfect even temperature in here, nonstop, and it runs very, very little. And it's this one right here. And it has this gauge, it has dual heating elements in it, dual fans in it. And the thing is nice, you just wired it in, brought it up, wired it right into my panel there, and the thing is so nice. So anyway, on to today's project. The project for today, this walker. So I have some grease fittings that I have to take out and replace in this thing because they just, they've gotten wet and they rusted over and the little ball that sits in the end of them, um, they just rust up. You can take a little punch, like a little, um, I don't know, a little poker, whatever you want to call it, and you can tap the end and sometimes you can get that ball to break free and then it springs back up because there's a little spring under them and, uh, and they'll start taking grease again but a lot of times you'll knock that ball in and it won't come back up. So uh, they just don't work the right way. It's easier just to take them out and replace them. But let me show you the big thing. This guard here for this exhaust. Now, I've always been a believer that they should redesign this. It looks nice. It's a nice looking guard. It does the job, but there's not very much clearance between this guard and the muffler itself which allows leaves to get in there and that's a common problem you'll hear guys talk about they use these walkers for leaf cleanups they get leaves stuck in there and they start on fire i've never had them start on fire i've had them smolder and start smoking but i've caught it in time and you know blow in there with uh with one of the blowers and blow all the leaves out of there and the problem's gone i've never actually had a fire but anyway right here see if i can show you that there Right here, there's a crack down this side. See how it moves like that? And that piece cracked. And it's been like that for about a year. I never really addressed it. Um, I don't know how to weld aluminum, to be honest with you. Um, my welder is more than capable of it. I just have to get what's called a spool gun for welding aluminum. I've never tried it. But at the end of the season, it also broke off right here at that end. Now, I could just buy a new one, but you guys know me and I'm all about fixing things. So I looked it up on YouTube, of course, and found different ways of trying to fix this. My original thought was, I wonder if I could just solder it and I wonder if it'll actually hold, um, but I wasn't really sure. So anyway, the more I looked up on YouTube, the more I kept seeing this. Instead of using regular solder, these are brazing and welding rods for aluminum 
and that's exactly what they're designed for and they're designed for automotive purposes uh, things of that nature so it's supposed to hold really strong and do a really good job I thought of JB welding it and all that kind of stuff but I'm really curious and I want to try this so uh, my bottle is empty here I went and bought a new bottle um, I, I got the map gas because this stuff burns a lot hotter if you guys know what I'm talking about you have this one here which is like regular propane and then you have this one here again it's like regular propane um, but the yellow bottles are map gas and they burn a lot hotter so anyway they say you have to get this stuff up right around 700 degrees and then use this this rod and uh, melt it in there and it's supposed to hold so my initial thought was I was going to do it right on here um, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this guard off and I'm gonna do it on the bench and uh, we're gonna see how well it works Now I don't know that you have to clean this metal up in order to do this, but I'm gonna treat it like it's anything that I weld. And I'm gonna take this here and I'm gonna clean up both sides of it. I'm gonna clean up there and there. And that way they're both nice clean edges when I go to put it back together. And then the same thing for this side over here, I'm gonna clean those up too and uh, Try to get them as clean as I can, I guess. And then I'm gonna attempt to do this. Uh, I'm gonna attempt to do this with them clean. Cause I imagine that'd be the best way. Get a nice clean surface and uh, probably get better contact like that. Okay, I thought I had it on there and it was sticking pretty good, but apparently not because as soon as I pulled these channel locks off, it came right off. Okay, so plan B. This isn't working the way that I thought it would, and I have my temp gauge here, and I think the problem is I'm not getting it all the way up to 700 degrees, but it's not working, and I replaced the batteries in it, and it's still not working. I don't know why. Um, I think because the kids used to play with it all the time to make the cat chase it around, but whatever. For whatever reason, it's not working. So I did happen to find this strip of aluminum that I had just laying around in my scrap steel pile, actually. And it is the exact width of this top piece. So I'm going to measure it. I'm going to cut it, drill a couple holes in, use some small quarter-inch bolts to hold it in place, drill my holes in each end. Done. Is it kind of rigged? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit, but it'll do the job and you'll never see it because the mount is behind anywhere where you can see looking at this mower. You'll never see it. It'll be functional and it'll do the job. And sometimes that's what you got to do because I looked this bad boy up and this bad boy is not cheap. 
So if I can just cut this, put it on there, you'll never see it. I'll be the only one that even knows it's done that way. Finished. Then I can get on to the next project. I'm gonna put these lock nuts on the back. They got that little nylon inside there. That as soon as this exhaust heats up, will probably melt off. But that's all I got. So that's what I'm using. But even if that stuff melts off, I'm not worried about it. It's not gonna start a fire. It's not gonna make the nuts fall off. It's not really gonna do anything, so. There we go. Now that's on there. Shouldn't be any problem at all. I just got to drill my end two holes for it to uh, for the bolt to go through, and this thing should be good to go. All right, they're in there, nice and tight, no rattling, no movement. That might be better than it was originally. How about that? Okay, so that's back on there. Look, I'm kicking that thing, shaking the whole mower. That thing is solid. Probably better than what it originally was. Bolted up just fine, and that thing isn't going anywhere. Them bolts I put across the back don't interfere with anything. They're way away from it. That's gonna work out great. Now let me just show you guys. Okay, Walker Parts Depot, heat shield muffler for MT. And that's what this is. See right there, $71.41. So $71.41 for, is that what it was? $71.41. Let's just add it to cart and see what they say. Um, okay, uh, agree and check out. Doo -doo -doo. 
um, I have an existing account we'll go ahead what I do is uh, I try to get as much as I can from the dealer but what I can't get from the dealer I use Walker Parts Depot for almost everything okay so this is what I wanted to see right here so $71.41 $14.33 for ground that's slow UPS ground shipping you can have it overnighted but $14.33 for ground total $85.74 that's what that would have cost me $85.74 and I fixed it with some scrap aluminum some scrap aluminum laying around now this piece here is just um, 1 16th inch by 1 inch by 6 foot piece and I think I paid I don't know four dollars or something for this from Home Depot and that's all it was so this and uh, a couple of quarter inch um, bolts and nuts and that thing is back together this probably with the little chunk I took off here the couple uh, bolts and uh, lock nuts that I put on there I don't know three dollars maybe this just cost me to fix versus 85 something I'd have to wait for it to come in no big deal I'm not using this mower till spring but if you ran into that problem during the year you'd have to fix it so and you'd have to fix it quick to get back up and running so that's the difference and that's why I fix my stuff versus just ordering parts all the time I have to do that in some cases but if I can fix it I'm gonna fix it okay so these are the three grease fittings in question there's everyone knows on walker mowers not everyone but if you run one or if you've watched any of my videos you know there are a ton of grease fittings on walker mowers now i have three that have given me issues with taking grease um this being one of them and for some reason that's like smashed over on the end i don't even know how that got smashed but it's that one there this grease fitting back here i don't know if i can really point to it this one right down there that one gives me issues um there's one more down there lower so i guess there's four so there's those three there and then this one right here that is a pain getting down there with a grease gun you wouldn't think it was a big issue and it really shouldn't be but for some reason it's always a pain to get down on that one and then that one has not taken grease the last two times i've tried to pump grease in so what i'm going to do is i'm going to replace them all but this one here when i take it out if i have one in my set i'm going to get one of the angled styles so that the zerk fitting the grease fitting comes out this side so i can just stick the grease gun right in there and uh take it out that way there's everybody's going towards greaseless machines nowadays i hate that i'm not a fan of greaseless machines i never have been um a lot of people prefer it because they don't have the maintenance of it but to me, I'd rather grease it myself and know that there's grease in it. Okay, so that's all done. Grease fittings are done. I had a hell of a time with the grease fitting down there. It goes to the pulley for the uh, blower for the turbine. There's a spring that wraps around it. And the spring was right against the grease fitting. So you couldn't get onto it. And then I put the blower lockout kit I did last year if you guys go back and look to my videos I did a full video the only one on YouTube about how to install one of the blower lockout kits when you're switching from a bagging deck to a side discharge deck you want to shut that blower off but uh so that was all in the way now to disassemble that whole unit to get that grease fitting out of there to put in um a better one I'll show it to you if I can find that damn thing here here it is right here this was the grease fitting that was in there but it was angled in a way where the one side was up against the spring so you couldn't get the wrench on it to get it out of there and the other side was angled toward uh, the main bar and the lock the blower lockout kit so it uh, it would I was unable to grease it and so I had to take that all apart and put in a different angled grease fitting so I can get a grease gun on it and grease it up so um, that was a nightmare to do but i got everything else greased on it um this thing's done for now everything i wanted to do to it for this winter i'll change the oil in the spring when i pull it back out but this thing is uh ready to go for another season so let's go put this thing away <laughs>
Well, that's that. Another project done and out of the way. Not as exciting as last year when I had that Toro in here and I gutted that thing. It was a new mower and uh, I redid that whole thing. I mean, that was a hell of a project for sure. But um, just basic maintenance stuff. I I have no, uh, no intentions of buying anything else right now. Um, we're going to start off the spring rolling with the V-Ride 2, of course, the Walker MT, and the uh, Toro Grandstand. Those are going to be the three main mowers. I have another idea. You guys know that Ferris Walk Behind I bought. Um, I haven't gotten any bites on it. Um, I know it's not the time of year to be selling mowers, but uh, nothing on that. You know, I'll relist it again in the spring and see if I can get any bites on it then. But uh, it'll be a phenomenal mower for somebody that wants that style mower. It's just not for me. I do have another idea though. Um, I was thinking about this last night um, when I said I'm trying to figure out the seat thing on these walkers and uh, I might just be done and get rid of them. And I started thinking to myself, I'm sitting here spending all this money or in all this time trying to find the perfect like 36 inch mower. Um, and since we really didn't, once I got the grandstand and the, got the grandstand back and I bought the new V-Ride 2 this past year, uh, 2020 for this season, that Walker B sat almost the entire season. We never really ran it because being on that thing all day long just jars the crap out of my back and Billy's back like I've mentioned in these last few videos. So I started thinking last night, I'm not going to go buy, and a lot of people suggested, why don't you go buy a V-Ride 2 or a Ferris 36 stand or any of those standards. I just can't, I can't get myself to spend that kind of money on a limited use mower. But I was willing to spend like 1500 two grand on a 36. So I started thinking about last night, I'm like, D dumbass, why don't I just buy a 36 inch deck for the Walker B? That 19 horse on there has more than enough power for the 56 inch side discharge deck that's on there. I mean, it handles it no problem because it's all shaft driven and gearboxes, not belt drive. So it takes almost none of the engine's power to power that deck. So it would be phenomenal for a 36. So that's what I'm going to look for. I'm going to try to find a used one. Um, if I can find a used 36 inch deck, I don't really care at this point if it's a mulching deck or a side discharge. I'm kind of leaning towards a mulching one. I really want to try one out. So um, I'm just going to put a 36 inch deck on that Walker B and uh, that will be my 36 inch mower to get through the gate. So um, I think I have to change the tires up on it because when I got it, I put the big tire kit on it, the wider tire kit, so now I think it's too wide. Um, I may have to put the small factory tires back on it, which are a lot smaller than what's on it now. If that don't work, I may have to go a little bit thinner. I know they make skinnier, thinner tires for um, all Walker's 36 inch mowers uh, to help them get through the gate. So, you know, that may be something I got to do, but I'm just going to get one. If I can't find a used one, I'll buy a new one. I'm sure I can get, I think that 56 inch deck brand new was like 1800 bucks or something. So a 36 can't be over a grand or it should be right around a grand. So if I spend that, I'm spending way less than what I'd spend on a used 36 inch mower anyway that may have problems. There's nothing wrong with that B. That thing just runs phenomenal year in and year out. So and I think there's right around, I don't know actually. I think there might be like 500 hours on that machine now. I don't remember. I don't, it's been so long since I've looked, but um, so that's what I believe I'm going to do. I'm going to turn that Walker B into my 36 inch mower. I think it'll be phenomenal, but I'm really gearing towards a mulching deck. If I can't, then I'll get a side discharge one, but uh, I'm really gearing towards a mulching deck. So that's the plan. That's, that's where I'm headed. A lot of people have asked in these last few videos and had a lot of questions. And uh, so I, I really think that's what I'm going to do. Sounds like a good idea to me. Make sure you hit the subscribe bobbity button, leave a thumbs up and comment if you want to. You don't have to, but if you want to, you can. We'll see you in the next one.